Hello, and welcome to What's That Behind You? Is your house full of spooky goings on? Do you want it to be? Have you ever scoured the internet to find a house with some guests already? How would you like to spend the afternoons whiling away in the sun, never quite knowing if that glass in front of you is going to move on its own? Well, today we're going to have a look at the top five most haunted houses that have been on the market. Creepy houses with chilling backstories. Would you be brave enough to put your hard earned wages down on a house that most people wouldn't spend just one night alone in? Before we get started on this list, if you find yourself enjoying the video at any time, please consider dropping a like, share the video around, and for more videos like this, please subscribe. It really does help the channel out. Let me start by saying that this list is in no ascending or descending order. Number one, 1677 Round Top Road, the site of the legendary conjuring. The story that served as the original inspiration and plot for the successful horror franchise The Conjuring began in this very house. It started with the ghostly presence of Bathsheba Sherman and with the real life world famous Ghostbusters Ed and Lorraine Warren coming in to investigate. Apparently, mysterious bright flashes of light, a creepy girl's voice, looming shadows as well as unexplained footsteps and knocks still occur in this 200 year old house. The three bedroom, 3,109 square foot structure is rustic but livable if you don't mind sharing it with other worldly residents and creepy raggedy Ann dolls. It sits on a wooded 8.5 acre lot with a couple of wooden outbuildings on the property for storage of tools, lawn paraphernalia or something much more ominous. And there's also a basement. Don't go down there. Or do. But don't say, I didn't warn you. A quote from their website states, The old Arnold estate, located in Harrisville, Rhode Island, is an authentic colonial home, circa 1736, whose paranormal phenomena were made famous by the Conjuring movie in 2013, depicting the hauntings of the Perrin family that lived there in the 1970s. Its paranormal past runs deep, as far back as 1700s, when the spirits of native tribes remained embedded in the land up through to the present day. With the many spirits who continue to inhabit and visit the property. The mystical farmhouse offers visitors an opportunity to engage with authentic paranormal activity and is considered one of the most active paranormal locations in the world. Set on 8.5 acres, surrounded by stone walls, open fields, a river and a forest, visitors come from around the world to observe and connect with the energy here that Andrea Perrin describes as a portal cleverly disguised as a farmhouse. Since opening to the public in 2019, thousands of visitors have witnessed and engaged with an abundance of supernormal activity present here. Number two, a house dubbed the most haunted in England may be sold as a holiday escape for thrill seekers after estate agents warned it could be impossible to sell as a normal home. The building in St. Osith, Essex is known as the cage because of its use in medieval times as a prison where 13 so-called witches were kept while awaiting trial in 1582. Three, including the notorious Ursula Kemp, were subsequently found guilty and hanged, but some believe their spirits have lingered at the site. Vanessa Mitchell, who has owned the house since 2004, says her time at the house was plagued by hauntings and that a ghost pushed her over while she was pregnant. She fled the house in 2008 and has been trying to sell it ever since. And now the home is back on the market for £240,000. Estate agents at Home Domus 360, who have taken charge of the sale, say they are pinning their hopes on a buyer who appreciates the paranormal. A spokesman, Florent Lambert, said Vanessa can't live in the house because of the ghosts and she has tried to sell it a few times over the years without much success. 
After its time as a prison, it became a private residence. Many owners have come and gone, with almost all of them couldn't handle the ghostly activities going on, resulting in going on the market plenty of times, and even leading to a reported suicide. Shadowy figures, spirits of children, and an angry entity who people can't seem to figure out if it's male or female. The spirit of Ursula herself has been spotted in the cage. Number three, the haunted LaLaurie Mansion. 1140 Royal Street, New Orleans, Louisiana. Is this the house where slaves were tortured at the hands of Delphine Lurie? If you've read anything about the ghosts and hauntings in New Orleans, there's no doubt that you've heard of the LaLaurie Mansion. It is one of the most popular stops on many New Orleans ghost tours. Sometimes people in the city won't even call it that, choosing to refer to the house as the haunted house instead. The fact is, in New Orleans, the two are the same. Shows like American Horror Story have already made the infamous location that much more notorious. The majority of filming happened at the Herman Grima house on St. Louis Street, probably for the best. Honestly, as people claim that the LaLaurie mansion is cursed. Did you know the mansion was home to Delphine LaLaurie? Her story is one of the most popular ghost stories on any ghost tour in New Orleans. The mansion and Delphine played a big part in the American Horror Story franchise, but no, the house was not there where they filmed. Nicolas Cage indeed once owned this house for a short time. It is also true that he managed his money as well as his acts and no longer owns the house. The mansion is widely considered one of the most haunted houses in New Orleans. Many people believe the ghosts of former slaves are the, causing the most of the hauntings. A dark entity within. Despite all of the ghost stories and par paranormal happenings at the LaLaurie house, it would be folly to assume that, that all of them can be traced back to Madame LaLaurie and her mistreatment of slaves in 1894. A tenant who lived in the mansion the house was converted into apartments, was brutally murdered in one of its rooms. They found his belongings ransacked as if someone had gone through them. The police assumed that it was a victim of a robbery, even though nothing of value was found missing. An interesting account regarding this murder deals with the police interviewing neighbours about his disappearance. One of his friends claimed that he was having problems with the spirits in his house. His friend wrote it off as his imagination running wild with him, but he did say something interesting. He claimed that his friend told him that there was a demon in that house who wasn't going to rest until he had met his end, which the man did in this house. Is it possible that at least some of the ghostly phenomenon can be result of this brutal murder? It certainly is possible. However, nobody will know for sure until a real paranormal investigation team can investigate this location. Only then, by communicating with the ghosts and the dead who still reside here, can we hope to get to the bottom about the truth of the ghosts of this mansion. Number four, Snedeker House, Southington, Connecticut. When the Snedeker family lived here in the 1980s, the drama they experienced in this haunted house and former funeral home was so crazy, it ended up inspiring a popular horror flick called The Haunting in Connecticut. During a two year span, the Snedeker parents claimed to have been physically assaulted and even sodomized by demonic spirits and said that their son, Philip, was often visited by a creepy man with long black hair. In 1986, the Snedeker family, Alan and Carmen and their three sons, daughter and two nieces moved into the simple white duplex rental home in Southington that had been at one time a funeral home. In the basement they found various mortuary toys including a hoisting apparatus for coffins, a medical gurney, blood drains and toe tags. Soon enough the Snedekers were reporting all kinds of evil including sexual attacks, apparitions and abrupt violent personality changes in their oldest son 
who was undergoing treatment for Hodgkin's disease. Mopwater was reportedly to turn blood red and the scent of rotting flesh and decay were reported throughout the house. They were also frightened of apparitions that they saw. One with long black hair and black eyes, the other one white hair and eyes and wearing a pinstripe tuxedo. It was then that only Carmen decided to contact controversial paranormal investigators Ed and Lorraine Warren. Ed and Lorraine Warren, the Connecticut demonologists who were involved in the infamous Amityville horror case, investigated the house and officially proclaimed it possessed and then launched a major media campaign around it. Number five, strap yourself in because this one is a long one. 30 East Drive, Pontefract. Why is this, the location in Pontefract, so infamous? Well, 30 East Drive is infamous for being home to Europe's most violent poltergeist. This property has seen so many people leave in terror as it's deemed one of the most haunted houses in Britain. It has many similarities to the infamous Enfield Haunting. It's also the film When the Lights Went Out was made based purely on this terrifying story of the Pritchard family that lived in this house and there has been numerous newspaper reports that can be assessed on social media. It has also been widely investigated by many paranormal teams such as Most Haunted and Paranormal Lockdown High have documented its malevolent activity. It is believed that this property is haunted by a malevolent poltergeist known as the Black Monk of Pontefract, also affectionately known as Fred. Despite attempts to bless this house, there are still paranormal teams reporting objects being thrown or moving in front of their eyes. Dark shadows lurking, doors opening, and strange sounds are heard when no one is around. A little bit of history about 30 East Drive. Jean, Joe, Philip and Diane Pritchard moved into the number 30 East Drive Pontefract in August 1966. Almost immediately, during the hot summer bank holiday, Philip and his grandmother first witnessed a baffling phenomenon. A fine layer of chalk-like dust falling, not from the ceiling, but from a level below head height. In an effort to clean up before Philip's holidaying parents returned, Mrs Kelly, Philip's aunt, who had been fetched by her mother to observe the falling dust, went to the kitchen for some cleaning implements whereupon she slipped on a pool of water that had mysteriously appeared. Her efforts to mop up the water were thwarted by more pools appearing on the linoleum in front of her and Philip's very eyes. This was the beginning of several years of incredible, inexplicable events. Green foam appearing from taps and toilets and even after the water was turned off. The tea dispenser being activated resulting in dried tea cascading into the work surfaces lights being turned off and on, plants leaping out of their pots and landing on the stairs, cupboards shaking violently, photographs being slashed with a sharp knife and an endless list of levitating and thrown objects, including a solid oak sideboard. Dubbed Mr Nobody by the local press in 1968, the family preferred to refer to the poltergeist simply as Fred, perhaps by a way of normalising it, as no number of as no number of paranormal teams could persuade the entity to leave the house in peace, and house-proud mother Jean refused to be terrorised out of her own house by an entity. Exorcisms were met with indignation, walls would seep holy water, faces were slapped, people were shoved down the stairs, and Fred's hands would appear from nowhere and conduct the Christian song aimed at shooing him off. Whilst wearing huge women's fur gloves, in fact, many of Fred's antics were both amazing and often highly amusing. Like when he calmly poured an entire jug of milk he removed from the fridge over sceptical aunt, leaving the kids in stitches. Ordinarily, poltergeists aren't known for causing grievously body harm, 
and although Fred caused a few bruises and scrapes and a lot of heart-stopping scares, in particular to Diane, seemingly the focus of the haunting, it is rare for a poltergeist to become excessively violent and cause physical harm. But in the case of Fred, that indeed, indeed became the case. Late on in his residency, when both Philip and Diane were beginning to exit adolescence, the activity reached a new climatic height, with Diane's long hair suddenly standing on end, followed by her being dragged, kicking and screaming, up the stairs. An event that left her seriously traumatised, and with clear, clearly visible finger marks on her throat. So that compiles a list of the top five most haunted houses around. Some of these have gone on to inspire scary stories, some stories all of their own. But did you know they were once available for you to own if you dare? Have you heard of any of these houses or any of these stories along the way? Let me know down in the comments. But for now, don't forget, if you're ever walking to the bathroom in the dead of the night and see someone walking through the door before you, don't be afraid. Just remember, you don't have to be afraid of what's behind you.